Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight. And that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night. So you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. It's Monday night and that means one thing, we welcome you here on Racesport TV to coverage of the club UK and Ireland Skip Barber Racing School Championship powered by And One Designs this week from Sonoma Raceway, think outside the oval. Well Vincent along with Rachel Whiteford here on Racesport TV, don't forget you can follow us on Racesport TV throughout the course of this event on Twitter. And commentary is coming to you live here today from Sonoma Raceway. Qualifying is underway and we will go right down to the action because Rachel, a couple of people have already put themselves a couple of laps on the board. Good evening, Will. Great to be with you here tonight in Napa Valley, California. Sonoma is an awesome track and this is going to be a brilliant race tonight. Some of these times are getting on the board already, looking really promising as we're having a look at Brendan O'Brien currently sat second place in qualifications we're riding along board with him as he works himself down the back straightaway I call it a back straightaway Rachel really this is a very difficult complicated section of the racetrack through the S's get a bit of momentum right now get yourself up to power a little bit but then in the dirty air these guys are just going to have to do a little bit of a comfort lift sometimes as you see O'Brien doing here but you set yourself up nicely now for that run down to the final corner yeah, absolutely, and this is one of those tracks that's it's got so many different types of corners involved and it really makes it a fun experience yet challenging for the drivers. The final complex, some to whether you can lift, some whether you can keep your foot flat, but it's always a circuit that will keep you guessing. Sebastian Job goes to provisional pole position, qualifying time of a 1 minute 45.674. You can see the times are changing up and down your screen all the time. Simon Povey currently on a lap as we work along board with him as he gets mighty sideways. Rachel, he's off the track there, almost going up the hill. Yeah, it's a very tricky, tricky circuit, as I said, Will. Some of these corners, that car is on its very edge of grip, and it is so, so hard to keep that thing in one straight line. These guys completing lap times like this, they're really, really good. 15 minutes left in qualifying then, so a long qualifying session, lap times they say about 1 minute 45, and that means these guys will get at least 10 laps in. Welcome on board with Graham Carroll right now on a lap in that number 10 car, and Rachel, what I'd expect these guys to do, do about 3 or 4 laps, pit get some fresh boots, go back out. So really this qualifying run is going to be, I would argue, two or maybe even three attempts for some of these drivers. 
yeah, that sounds like a reasonable assumption, Will. I've the very bumpy track. Obviously, abrasiveness isn't something that we account for in eye racing at this stage, but it's a very bumpy track, and there's a lot of shifting of the weight of the car, so these tyres are actually wearing down quite quickly, and you're right, you know, coming in for a fresh set of tyres, going back out again will make a big difference. Although, unlike last week at uh, Summit Point Raceway, where we had single car qualifying, this week, of course, back to form with multi-car qualifying, where in places that draft will be a big factor, Will. Graham Carroll moves himself up one position as we're just checking in with Tim Adcock down on the 13th position on the racetrack in the Martini car, working himself through turn 3A and 3B because, Rachel, we are in America. Therefore, if you don't have a corner called the carousel, you have to have multiple corners. You see Clive Armstrong there going off the racetrack, involved in a bit of a collision there. Well, there'll be more than one collision today, Will. Yep, if it's not got a carousel, a bus stop, or A, Bs and Cs, it's not an American racetrack. So let's have a look then to see what happened to Clive Armstrong. This is him working up through 3B, getting himself loose on the exit of the corner and just spearing himself into the wall. Yeah, with these elevation changes, Will, it's really, really easy to get that car unsettled. And when it does, with it being a rear-engine, rear-wheel drive car, it loses that, that grip and round you go like a spinning top. Sebastian Job though now has only got a quarter of a second advantage over Simon Holbert as we have a look at Job working himself on a lap here at Sonoma Race. So it's had a couple of different names over the course of its lifespan. First known as Sears Point Raceway, then of course as Infineon Raceway. One of the earliest tracks in the world, Rachel, to actually be named after a sponsor, of course, the other famous one in North America was of course, Lowe's Motor Speedway, now again known as Charlotte Motor Speedway, and right now Sonoma Raceway. It's doing, uh, making life tough for drivers. Sebastian Job as we're riding along board of him now, not having it easy in qualifications as Holbert just continues to eke away at that gap. That's true, and if you remember from our trip to Barber Motorsports Park with this series, you remember that Simon Holbert and Sebastian Job were almost neck and neck for a large part of that race, so expect those two characters to be around the front of this race. Job will come past the start finish line any moment now. Can he improve at a 145.674? Answer to that question is going to mean, well, yes, he does. So he goes a couple of hundredths faster there. So he's now got a two tenth of a second gap and 86 one hundredths of a second to add on to that. But here is Simon Holbert. As you see, he's working himself on the back end of the racetrack in that SSR racing car. Working himself now down towards um, one of the many different layouts. And Sonoma, of course, has got so many different layers. They're actually running on the drag strip. Then they cut away from it as they come into the, one of the many different configurations. This track has been configured so many times for IndyCar racing. You almost forget what you're running at. Of course, they host one of the two NASCAR road races in the NASCAR Spring Cup Series as well, Rachel. That it does, and of course the Skip Barbers, in fact last season we had this series running here at the NASCAR Cup layout. We're back here at the long layout, which I believe was used by the Tudor series. Of course we have the IRL and IRL 2007 layouts for the Indy cars. This track, it has the curve away from the drag strip of course being a much wider turn than it is for the Indy car layout. Which is the only real difference I think Will, but, if, oh and of course final turn 11 is round the barrels rather than cutting across the apron area but it's um, a very long circuit but it rewards driving styles like Sebastian Job. he pushes very hard and it's something we always mention he really gives it everything and on a track that like this a very risky track that actual driving style is an advantage will so and Holbert not able to improve on lap lap let's check in then with Stuart Adcock running himself in the third position right now on the racetrack now this is going to be one of those racetracks Rachel where drafting isn't going to be anywhere near as important mainly because of the fact that when you have got long straightaways like on the front stretch that really goes into turn number one you actually don't want to be in dirty air down into turn two and then also the section that Adcock's working himself onto now after you come through the loop in turn five and working yourself down that drag strip, you actually don't want that dirty, you don't want that dirty edge of the corner again because it is mighty difficult on the car, on the tyres, and tyre wear, as you mentioned earlier, is going to be a very difficult factor for some of these drivers over the course of today's race. Very true, very true, and of course after run, run to turn two, and through turn one, and turn ten, for example, on this track, both of those basically kinks on very long straights. And even under its own power, the car is really on the edge of the adhesion of grip. So being in the draft, going a little faster, is actually going to mean you're going to miss those corners. So clean air, vital here at Sonoma. 
Adcock still working himself on a lap, of course. Simon Holbrook is just a little bit further ahead on the racetrack. There you see him working himself now down towards the final corner. So we'll stick with Simon Holbert first as he works himself down into the final corner. You can see the Serena sign, the NASCAR Spring Cup sign and the Sonoma sign as he works themselves along the elongated version of that final corner. Pit Road entry is on the outside of that. Past start finish line will come to Simon Holbert. Can he improve on a time of 1 minute 45.8? Answer is, well, he can, but not by much there, Rachel. Uh, 1 minute 45.835. Yeah, finding those last few tenths might be a lost cause here today because, I'll be honest, a 1.45.5 is a very rapid lap time there from Sebastian Job. Holbert, you may still be starting second, but remember, Will, that will be on the outside into turn one, which gives him the inside line into turn two. If I was him, I'd like to be second. Yeah, and it's one of those tracks, a bit like Suzuka, where you don't get as much of an advantage down into that first couple of corners. Um, Suzuka, of course, um, famously... Back in 1990, they switched it around to give Alain Prost a little bit of a chance down in towards turn one. We know exactly how that one ended, Rachel. But you are right. The way that this track works is that you have got to complete your passes quickly. If you remain side by side for a couple of corners, you're actually going from being on the optimum line to the unoptimum line within a space of a couple of hundred yards. Ah, Simon Povey gets himself very loose there through turn five. Absolutely, and this track is famous within the IndyCar schedule, year after year, of turn two pileups. So, you know, getting through turn one is difficult with cars too wide, especially in the pack on the start. And Holbert at the moment on the outside, that will put him on the inside for turn two, which is exactly where he wants to be. His job is to keep himself level with Job if he does start second, and he can have that turn and the advantage. So, it's still Job from Holbert, from Adcock, from Povey, from Carroll. Not a fun fact for today. Top four drivers, top two rows, all start with an S here today. Graham Carroll rounds out your top five. We've got all of the drivers except for Tom Ward and Mark O'Connell currently circulating on the racetrack. Some pretty close gaps down on that mid-pack as well. I'm looking at Paulo Grillo in seventh, George Lambert in eighth. Just a couple of hundredths of a second separating them as we have a look then at Dominic Red in last lap time, 1 minute 46.3. Can he improve as he comes past the start finish line? We will find out in just a couple of moments time. He comes past the stripe. It is not going to be an improvement on the lap time there for Dominic Brennan. He remains in the ninth place for the time being. George Lambert working himself through the S's right now down towards those final couple of corners. And for some of these guys in the mid-pack, you want to get yourself as high up as possible to avoid what can sometimes be a bit of melee down into turn number one, Rachel. Definitely true, Will, and with 4th place through to 17th place being in the 1 minute 46 bracket, there's going to be a lot of cars around each other all race, so getting that early track position is going to be incredibly important. Uh, Lambert runs very, very wide in that final corner. That's going to throw his lap away. 6 minutes and 26 seconds left on the play clock. And Rachel, as I said, some of these guys might want to go out and do a couple of runs. If I was them, I would come onto pit road now. Bit like final qualifying in um, the Formula 1, put on a fresh set of boots and go like hell because Sebastian Job is still leading the way. There you can see the gap to himself and P2, Simon Holbert, where well, it's about two tenths of a second. They can see it on the race track between these two right now. And for Holbert, I think he just needs some fresh rubber right now because his last lap he's not been improving much, but Holbert does continue along as we check on with him as he comes down into that final corner. Yep, absolutely. He's had some good times in there, but he's just not really improving on that 1 minute 45 8 bracket. Two tenths to find here, very difficult, and he, I think fresh rubber could well be the advantage he needs. He's still got time, of course, as he's got six minutes roughly of qualifying left. It's enough for a couple of time laps here, Will. But if he's going to make that choice, he's got to do it now. 1 minute 45.901 that last time by for Simon Holbert. That is not going to be good enough as you've got a couple of movings. Ward in 6th position, Grillo in 7th, George Lambert still in that 8th position. The gap between Mercer and Williams is very close. P9, P10. There you can see Williams on the racetrack. He's onto a flying lap right now. We'll rock along board of him for a couple of corners because... A little bit loose there through turn number two for Clark Williams in that number 98 car. Yep, absolutely. He's now coming through the turn three complex. Three and three A, I believe it is. Very tough with that rising apex as he comes now down through to four. 
very tough, keep it on the inside, track it out wide, get the maximum momentum through the corner, and he runs now through the kink here to turn five, the carousel, one of our favourite names of corners it seems. Of course, and just to let you know, Adcock and Holbert, just three one thousandths of a second now separating them, there you can see Simon Holbert, he is on the racetrack and working himself through the S section of the racetrack. So a nice lap working so far for Holbert. Of course, he's trying to attack to job, but whilst this is all going on, Adcock just keeps nibbling away at that gap. There you can see Stuart Adcock on the track. He's only, uh, he's actually just ahead of him on the racetrack. So right along board with Adcock right now. His last lap was a 147. He goes very wide in that final corner, Rachel. Absolutely, no such thing for Simon Holbert as he gets a perfect line through turn 11. In fact, gaining quite massively on Adcock. Let's see what his time will be as he crosses the line this time as he runs down to the start finish line here. 145.768, um, close, but not close enough. He's still 166, one thousandths of a second back with three minutes to go on the play clock. So these guys, they'll be getting now down to fumes. They've probably got themselves two laps to go. Of course, the difference between closed qualifying and open qualifying, Rachel, is if you hit that start finish line with one second remaining, you still get a complete extra lap to try and get that job done. But Holbert is looking very loose right now. He is pushing it right to the ragged edge. Absolutely, and although he has given himself a bit of a barrier over Stuart Adcock in third place, oh my god, as he decides to enter orbit. Yeah, there you can see Tim Adcock. Now, if I was him, you've got to get off the racetrack, got to get back to pit road as quickly as you can. We'll get ourselves a replay of this then. Simon Holbert will. Uh, for Simon Holbert, even, as we will have a look on board with him. His last lap was a 145.768, his fastest lap of it. He just got onto the grass, and that just threw him upside down almost. Somehow, that car stayed on all four wheels, Rachel. <laughs> Incredible, but yeah, if you run wide on that corner, and it's very easy to do, Will, that sucks you off the track, and it pulls you to the right-hand side, and you, can, you can't even turn. Any attempt would spin the car, so he did his best to try and keep hold of it, but in the end, um, went off-roading. Top 10 as it stands. Job from Holbert, from Adcock, from Poby, from Carroll, from Lambert, from Ward, from Grillo, from Brennan, from Williams. A total of 22 drivers have set themselves a qualification lap right now. Holbert is not out on the racetrack. If he wants to get another lap in, he will have to go now, Rachel. Yes, he will. Absolutely. Last chance he has for this run with two minutes left on the play clock. It's going to be tight whether he can get a good lap in. Of course, it takes at least another lap or two for those tyres to actually get up to a good working temperature here, Will. Adcock sets his first lap of qualifying but does not improve his position. He is currently about half a tenth back from Holbert and he is pushing it. But there is no tomorrow. One minute, 40 seconds left. So basically, if these guys are not on a lap, they are not going to get another one in. And Holbert is still sat on pit road. So that will be his qualifying over. Job is on the racetrack, Adcock is on the racetrack, but Povey and Holbert are not running at all. Carroll, there you can see him, he is still going on the racetrack as he works himself out of the um, turn four, down into turn five, the carousel. Now for this guy, Carroll, this is going to be his final lap, so he's going to push it, but he goes very loose there for the carousel, Rachel. Yeah, that corner of this car, the car is so loose, it is absolutely on the edge of its grip, and it you are doing everything you can to fight for that little bit of traction that carousel turn it's going to be treacherous in the race will so carol then half a lap to go for his qualification run and say so you still have got a job on the racetrack but it looks as though unless adcock can pull out a barnstormer as we're having a look with adcock right now with just a couple of corners left to go all over the curb there down into the second to last corner he will get one more lap in Keep an eye out on the times of Adcock as he hits the rev limiter coming down into that final corner. He'll work himself out of that final corner. His fastest lap has been at 1 minute 45.88. As he comes past the start finish line, can he improve on that third place? He's not got an attack from Holbert. He doesn't do it that yes. time by. Yes, he does. 1 minute 46.010. He doesn't improve. He doesn't improve, but he's got oh. one more lap to go. Nine seconds left on the play clock. Adcock is on the racetrack. He'll have one more chance. Running a little bit wide, though. Out of turn number two as he comes down into 3A and 3B. All over the curves. Checkered flag is out. And Adcock loses it. Oh, big impact there on the exit of turn 3A. 
I don't know why, Will, but for some reason I read that as a 145-0, not a 46-0, so excuse my exclamation. So let's get a replay then with Stuart Adcock as he worked himself down into 3A and 3B. We'll have a look, see what happens here. He used that curb quite a lot. We get the RaceBot TV Super Slow Mo cam up. You can see Rachel is loose all the way through 3A and then all that drive through 3B. Those wheels were not pointing in the right direction. Doesn't hit 3B at all. Slams into the barrier on the outside of the racetrack. Yep, again, it's that gravel surface off the edge of this track. You get on that, it's going to pull you right off the track, Will. Paul Grillo is working himself on a lap. I'm not sure if this will be timed, actually. Just having a look. He, I don't think this is going to be a timed lap for Paul Grillo. So just way making a lap up, making sure he knows exactly what he has for the race. But you've got Brendan O'Brien just over the hill as well. I don't think this is a timed lap for him as well. He didn't make it back to the start-finish line in time. You've got Alan Peterson bringing his car on towards pit road. You have got Robert Plumney on a lap right now. And this one will be counted, Rachel. Plumney currently classified in the 20th place on the racetrack. Looking to improve as he wrecks it there out the second to last corner. That's another nose cone given up to the gods of Sonoma, Will. Let's get another look at that one then very quickly before we go down to the grid. And Plumney was all over the place at this section of the racetrack. Working himself down into the second to last corner. Coming down, just used a little bit too much of that curb, and then that car just drifts off the racetrack. And that means, however, we can go down to your starting grid, as it is going to be a crazy race here today at Sonoma. And to run through your starting grid, it will be Sebastian Job starting this race on pole position once again. And in second place will be Simon Holbert with a, after all was said and done actually, about a three and a half tenths of a second gap as Job goes faster on his final lap. Adcock in third, Povey in the fourth position, then Lambert fifth, Graham Carroll in sixth, Tom Ward seventh, Paul Grillo in eighth, Dominic Brennan in ninth and Clark Williams rounding out your top ten. Mark Mercer in eleventh and Clive Armstrong in twelfth, Richard Avery thirteenth, Bill Fraser fourteenth, Tim Adcock fifteenth, Brendan O'Brien in 16th, Anna Patterson 17th, Mark O'Connell 18th, Rich Jones 19th, and Robert Plumney rounding out your top 20. 22 drivers, Rachel, about to do battle here at Sonoma Raceway, where again, we have to think outside the oval. We just seem to have lost Rachel there, so I'm going to have to do this one alone by the look of it. Here you can see Sebastian Job. The cars are lining up on the grid. We are just about 30 seconds away from right going out to start this race. Rachel, who's your money on? This week, with Job's speed, but somewhat lacking consistency, I think my money's on Simon Holbert, Will. Well, that's going to be a brave choice then. Rachel putting her money on Simon Holbert. There you can see the front couple of rows. You can see 10 seconds left until those lights will go on on top of the icing.com gantry as we get set to go running here at Sonoma Raceway. Time to think outside the oval as 14 laps about to go racing here at Sonoma. This race will start right now and it was a very good start there by the number 13 car Sebastian Job as they work themselves down in towards turn number one for the first time behind all the cars swarming to get themselves into position I tell you who it's a good start for it is a great start for Stuart Adcock in the 52 car as if I'm right I don't think our second place driver took the grid Rachel no he did not in fact Simon Hulbert has started from the pit lane so, either an omen of turn two, which never happened, but he's going to be a little bit behind, unfortunately. There goes my prediction, Will. As you can see, the field all working themselves down into turn number four for the first time. Nice in the mid-pack, nice out front. No issues at all. This field is spread out nicely as they work themselves a little bit side-by-side -side racing at the rear between Bobby Rest um, and Robert Plumney. And this is a battle for 18th, 19th position on the racetrack as we ride along board with Bobby West. So West is able to just keep that one moving in this battle. Say so down the field, but a little bit too wide racing in the early going. Just ahead of him, we have got a close battle going on between Tim Adcock and Brandon Brown. A little bit of side by side racing here with Adcock and Fraser riding along board then with 
Bill Fraser in the number 19 car, side by side through the S's. This never seems to work well, but looks though like Fraser is just going to be able to eke that one out, Rachel. Yes, he is, and it seems like uh, Adcock's brother, Stuart, up front has been all over Job, nearly taking the S's too wide with him as well. Maybe it's something in Adcock's their DNA, but he's the looking lead. for the outside. He's just taken the lead there, Tim, and they were almost three wide. It's dropped all the way down on that inside line, almost cutting across the curb. They are going to be too wide, three deep as they work themselves out of the final corner. Tim Adcock will lead lap number one here at Sonoma Raceway, but it is mighty close. Adcock to the point, Rachel. Yep, and Stuart Adcock at the point is now heading up to turn one with the Joe ball over the back of his car. This is where things are going to start to get risky. He's been up two or nearly three wide with cars wobbling about. Oh, well, I can hardly breathe. This is getting exciting. This is great racing as Job is going to have to hang on in towards turn number three. As these guys, you've got your top eight drivers separated by just a second on the racetrack as you have a car going sideways. Three wide. Three wide down in towards turn number four. There you can see it's right along board with Tom Ward. He's able to come out with that one in front. And the number 10 car, Graham Carey, you can see it on your screen, got a little bit of wing damage. But these guys, great racing at the start of today's event, Rachel. Yes, it is. And the, <laughs> should we say the mid pack or the front at the back of the front pack are really, really pushing hard for those positions. Although a gap already opening behind our front three as things stand. And uh, a bit of a two, three wide fracas as we come into the uh, hairpin. Yeah, as you can see, Sebastian Job trying to make that move on the outside. He wasn't quite close enough, but we saw they almost ran side by side through the S's that last time by. Sebastian Job is going to try going down to the inside and the S's. That didn't work out for him. What Job is doing right now, Rachel, is he's just getting his sight to markers. So he knows what to do in the last couple of laps, but we know how good Job is. Once we get into the second half of the race, and Job is going to try and go round the outside. This is mighty close racing. Job is just about going to squeeze back ahead. He will, but of course, let's not forget, Stuart Adcock will have that inside line into turn three 11. Wide. As they're three wide, my... Oh! Oh! So close there, but Job's going to hang on. Adcock on the outside line. There you can see the cars behind him, and there you can see Stuart Adcock running side by side. It looks like that Job is going to be able to hold on as they come down in towards turn number one. Three wide down to that final corner in Sonoma. That never, ever, ever, ever works. That's one of the biggest advantages of this really small car wheel. You can have way more of them in one place of track than you can with many others. And it certainly breeds exciting racing. Three wide into turn 11. That's optimistic as we see the number 78 car of Simon Povey having to wiggle. Um, these guys are really pushing the number very, very early here. Obviously trying to find out what they've got in their cars in terms of race performance. Of course, we're on lap 3 of uh, 14. No, it's a little optimistic to be going this hard, but I think they certainly want to cement those positions before things string out too far. Yeah, and we do know that these races do get a little bit more spread out after the first couple of laps are complete, but you can tell right now it is job from Adcock. Gap is two times per second on the racetrack. Just ahead of them, so behind them is Ward and then Povey and then Lambert, and here comes Adcock to the outside. Not quite close enough as they work themselves out of the corner, but this is where Job made that run that last time by. Will Adcock try and repeat the favour? We'll know in a couple of corners because Adcock all over the red. And a lot of curb popping there by both Job and Adcock. And we do know this car can be sensitive to those high curbs. Well, you exactly will. And of course, anyone who's driven Sonoma will know. In a skip barber, these curbs are sometimes almost as big as the car. <laughs> Some of them are quite significant, of course, designed to constrain a NASCAR Sprint Cup car. But, uh... They can almost, you could actually damage the Skip Barber car with those curbs if you're too aggressive, but it's just a minor use of them can upset the vehicle. Although, as we see now, Simon Holbert moving his way up from his pit lane start, 18 seconds behind our leader, Will, in 19th place. Yeah, but Adcock's going to have another run of it as they come down in towards turn number one. This is what we mean. You're going to be on the outside Ooh, for that first corner, contact. but then we have got contact, a little bit of contact. Adcock Bobby is going to make it work. Adcock is going to stay on that inside down in towards turn number two. It does look as though that they're going to remain side by side out of two. That run down into three. Great racing here. And you can see this is allowing Tom Ward back into the picture. They remain side by side through three A. Down they come into three B. And you can see that Ward's going to try and make it three wide. He will almost make it three wide. Adcock goes back to the race lead. So they come down in towards three. And they again are three wide as they work themselves down into the carousel. And it's going to be Job sweeping around the outside. And he'll have that inside line down to the next corner. They are three abreast, almost too deep, Rachel. 
this is very, very close racing wheel. In fact, the, almost the textbook definition of it is they're now too, staying too wide on the exit of this corner. I don't think I've seen anything like this before. Look at the way that these guys are battling. So we're having a look on board once again with Stuart Adcock. They're working themselves down into the hairpin. Adcock looking to try and do the crossover on the nine car. The nine car gets a very good run. That's actually going to allow him now to make that charge over job as they come back down into the SEGC. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cars, all separated by pretty much nothing. Grillo going past a very slow, um, getting past there by Clark Williams. Grillo just a little bit slow as they are three wide in the S's there down in the mid pack. That is insane stuff. I haven't seen racing this close in a very long time, Rachel. What well, they work themselves back down towards that final corner once again. And it does look as though that job is able to hang on this time. But it is now Ward up into second place. Adcock down into third. And Simon Povey is just sat there in that fourth position. He has been waiting for the time to pounce. And he now goes to the outside of Adcock as they run down in towards turn number one. Yeah, this is getting really, really close up front wheel, of course. Just want to mention Alan Patterson, unfortunately, out early after flipping and approach to turn 11 a lap ago. He's currently in the pits, but we may well be withdrawing from this race, unfortunately. Tom Ward goes ahead of Sebastian Job, but not for long. Yes, he will stay just for the time being ahead as they work themselves from 3A and 3B once again, working ourselves. On lap number 5 of 14 here at Tonoma Raceway. It right now is Ward from Job from Adcock and Povey from Lambert. They are your top five. It's a little bit of two wide racing behind. There you can see that was George Lambert and Mark Mercy running side by side. Having a look then with the onboard camera of George Lambert as they work themselves through turn number 5. That is the number 78 car just ahead of them. That is Simon Povey just hanging on into P4 for the time being. Does look as though Lambert though is going to get a much better run as they come down into the corner and ahead. Side by side battle for the race lead again. And Ward is going to lose that one that time to Sebastian Job. Job goes back to the front. But whoa, big contact there. They do make a little bit of contact as they work themselves out of the hairpin. Just behind, Povey gets the better of Mercer. As you see, they are continuing to battle all over the place, Rachel. It's so hard to keep up with this. It really is. And if we need 20 cameras for this one, Will, because we have big battles throughout this field. Whether it's at the front or the mid-pack or somewhere towards the rear, there are guys all over this field kicking ass. This is one a hell of a race. The job will have the inside line down to the final corner, but there you can see the 09 car trying to go contact. around him. And there is a little Big bit contact. of contact there. Um, a lot more than a little bit of contact. Clark but, Williams. Yeah, and there you can see Clark Williams at the rear of your shot just going to be classified as out of the race down into that final corner. But you can see the gap out front is still absolutely nothing as we ride back along board then with Ward. And this is that battle for the race lead with Sebastian Job coming down in towards turn one. Ward is so much better under braking, but Job is just so much stronger. Once they actually work themselves out of the corner, as you can see, our oh, camera high above as they come down in towards turn 3A and 3B. Job does look as though that now he's got past those first couple of laps. This is that time that he normally starts to pull away, Rachel. It is indeed, but the guys behind him just don't seem to want to play to that uh, hymn sheet, in fact, with uh, our top four sticking to the back of Sebastian Job like glue. Big, big impressive drive today from Tom Ward. He's been brilliant, Will. Uh, it's just behind Povey getting himself a little bit of wiggle. That's going to allow Mark Mercer to go past him as they work themselves out of turn five. That run down into six once again. Will Povey try and attack back on the outside coming down to the next corner? The great thing about this configuration is that there are two lines and that, as you see, is what is happening just ahead as you've got now. Adcock trying to go back on wall. This is about for P2 on the racetrack. Now, don't forget, Rachel, last week when the guys in P2 started fighting, this is when Job got away. Those guys in second place need to remember that there is still a guy ahead of them. And if they take the game, take the focus off the game for one moment, Job will be away into the sunset. Absolutely. The only reason they've kept him honest so far is because they've been fighting with him. They really need to get back up on top of him pretty soon, or like you say, he's going to be off into the sunset. Back they come into the final corner once again. Job does lead the way. He has led a total of four laps here today. Adcock has led one of these laps as they work themselves out that final corner down towards start finish line. It's Job from Adcock, from Ward, from Povey, from Lambert, Mercer, Grillo, Armstrong, Brennan and Fraser. They are your top ten as Adcock is now going to be the one trying to make that charge over Sebastian and Job. I think the issue is though for Adcock, he's just not as strong under braking as what we've seen Tom Ward be. Now of course, and Tom Ward is 
really, really good braking from his car. He really gets the car slowed down into the corner. Bit of late braking, but he's mostly trailing as we oh, have Jobs off. Job off. Yeah, Sebastian Job is off, and that's going to allow Adcock down to the inside. Or is it? it? Will also allow potentially, yes, we see potentially Ward is going to be side by side as well. Sebastian Job made a bit of a mistake. We'll get ourselves a replay of that one up on your screen. This is what happened to Sebastian Job. This is only exit of 3B, Rachel. Yeah, him just getting rough, run off to the side there. Again, like I've said with previous incidents we saw during qualifying, getting loose, getting wheels on that gravel. The only thing you can do is keep the wheels straight and ease the car back on the track. Anything else, you're going round. And there you can see that number 52 car moved itself down to the inside of Sebastian Job. But the battle continues. And guess what? Job is actually back to the race lead, getting himself back past um, Adcom. So these four, uh, just having a look, Rachel, five guys separated by one second right now. Ward off, Lambert. he's back. Yeah, as uh, Ward is off the racetrack and he's running side by side, almost again, three wide. So work themselves now down Contact. towards the final corner. Um, Mercer. Behind you, see car off the racetrack. That was Ward <laughs> almost into that tie bone. Now that would have been a wicked impact, but Ward goes back past. What a breaking move there down to that final corner. Yep. I do think that Lambert might have just given that position to him. I think he did. There's some heavy contact between the two of them as we see uh, Stuart Adcock back past uh, Sebastian Job in turn 11. Although Job looking again to go up the outside. This guy does not give up, Will. He doesn't as they work himself under the Bank of America for Bridge. Down in towards turn number one once again. Adcock, there is Job. There you can see Simon Povey. Povey's now up into that third position as we ride along board with that guy in the number 78 car. And this is what I'm talking about, Rachel. Top three drivers separated by a half a second on the racetrack. You blink, you miss them. Exactly, Will. This is really, really close racing. Something the Skip UK and I Skip Barber series is well renowned for. Close, fair action. And we're seeing a prime display of that today. Down they come. Over halfway is done in this event. Just to let you know, by the way, the Tyrese in this race, Quark Williams and Richard Avery, they are both classified as out of the race. And here you can see the cars coming back down beneath the haze into the very tight hairpin coction. And here comes Job back to the outside. Battle for the race lead. Going and work ourselves on board with Job. He gets a much better run out of the corner that time by. That's going to set himself up nicely. First part of the S corner is a left hander. Then it's a right hander. There you can see Adcock behind him. Job just squeezes past there. Yeah, that's always Job saying, of course, you know, Sebastian, uh, Stuart A. Adcock, sorry, can really get his braking done into the corner. But Sebastian Job seems to carry so much more momentum. He takes a slightly wider line. He tracks out wider. And he just carries so much more speed through, Will. A bit of a wiggle again from Ward as they work themselves down into the final corner. This is him battling with Lambert. You can see it as we work ourselves on board with Grillo coming out of the corner. Adcock is there again side by side as they work themselves down. They're going to have less than five laps to go as they come past the line. Almost going to be a free wide situation again. And the gap at the line, Rachel, um, well, that was incredibly, and I mean incredibly close. Oh, I don't think we need a ruler to mention just how close this is. We're seeing these cars running nose to tail. Well, it's just so, so close, but it's so clean as well. We've seen maybe one or two incidents of contact. What we've seen so far has been self-induced in terms of our retirees. This is awesome racing. Just have a look as we've got our camera looking up above. We'll zoom it out. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten drivers. You can get into one shot there, and it's just absolutely insane stuff. They work themselves through the carousel. Your top five drivers are still separated by one second on the racetrack. Lambert, 1.1 second back, as they work themselves now down in towards that carousel. Sorry, that hairpin once again. And look at this on the outside, Simon Povey. And then you also have Sebastian Jobs, Drew Adcock. Adcock's going to go around the outside. Hobie, I think I said earlier, he's been looking for that chance to pounce. I think that chance might be coming up any moment now. It's looking on board of him. Battle for the race lead is just ahead of him, Rachel. Yeah, it will. And if oh! we all contact, can... Yeah, that's going to put, I believe, that was... Dime Stuart Adcock. Yeah, that was Adcock who went off the racetrack there. We'll get ourselves a replay of that one. It was always going to happen at St. Pound. And we're going to get a replay of Povey in just one moment. First, we'll go to Adcock. This is the issue, then, is they work themselves out of the corner as we'll get a look at Simon Povey. Um, sorry, Stuart Adcock, even. And it was that side-by-side -side moment. And I think there was contact right about 
here as yet yeah, job just comes across him there and it was so close rachel racing incident arguably because these guys have just been picture perfect until then oh true um, we can't really put blame there of course you know these guys have been racing so close that it was mathematically going to happen at some point with cars so close side by side as we see uh Sebastian Joe almost giving up another place now to Tom Ward I think uh he's had a few scrapes on his side pods for most of this race could be one scrape too many there for Sebastian Job so here is Povey and Job just behind him, side by side with Ward, almost three wires, they come down in towards turn number four. Now this is what I was talking about earlier, if any of these guys have used up their tyres too much and spent too much time defending, this is going to allow one drive to dance off into the sunset. Povey has the biggest lead of the race so far, at half a second on the racetrack, as we've got a car up a little bit high there, down into the carousel. That was George Lambert as we're going to get a great view of these cars coming down into this corner as Simon Povey, there you see him, got himself a four turn for a second cushion. You can actually breathe for a couple of corners, Rachel. Well, I wouldn't breathe too closely because Sebastian Job, like the shark he is, is coming back at him again. This is, the guy doesn't give up, does he, Will? Simon Povey, brilliant to move past him, of course, whilst Job was slightly off put after his contact with, uh, uh, sorry, with, um, Remind me, please. Ad Stuart Adcock, sorry, Ad yes. Mind okay. blank, guys, I sorry. Can it, I can make it in WTS, you can make it here today. We're now equal, so... We are. As these guys work themselves again through this beautiful corner. Um, that second to last corner. Let's have a look at Grillo. He's got a little bit of pressure from Lambert behind him. Um, Adcock is, by the way, classified as out of today's event. And this train of cars actually goes down to this guy. Here you can see um, Brendan O'Brien. We've now four laps to go, running in that ninth position. We get it up on your screen, Rachel. P9 is less than four seconds behind your overall race leader. Yeah, this is a really close field. As we saw during qualifying, position one through 17 were within two seconds of each other. As we now see Job going down the inside out of turn two to resume his place at the front. Although, I oh know Simon has given up. Yeah, uh, Simon Oi will get the cut over, and you can see a lot of use of the curb that time by for Simon Povey. That's going to put him back down to the inside as they come then through that um, fabulous turn number four. You can see Tom Ward's almost pushing Povey through this section of the racetrack. There you can see um, Sebastian Job is on the inside line. Povey is going to lose out here potentially also to Ward, but Povey will get a much better run on the outside of the carousel, almost getting chop blocked there by um, Sebastian Job as he pushes wide a little bit. Is this going to go free wide again here, Rachel? I think it is. Tell you what, Will, if this wasn't uh, Sonoma and it didn't say think outside the oval, I would think I'd be watching an oval race right now because the amount of wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, two and three wide racing we've had in this Skip Barber Racing Series race has been incredible, Will. You normally only see racing this close at, at drafting, let's be honest, through the carousel, people switching lanes to push different people. This is like watching an oval race. The only difference right. is that we don't have any commercials to kind of ruin it all for the fans. We're riding along board with um, George Lambert, currently scored in the fifth position. There's Job once again going down to the inside. Battle for the race lead over Tom Ward. There you can see it down to that final corner. And it will come down, I think, Rachel, to who can get the best run out of this corner on that final lap. And these guys will start being a bit like IndyCar racing at Indianapolis figuring out where they need to set the pass up because Job leads as they come down to free to go but Povey is there, Ward is there and don't count out this guy, Paul Grillo he's now up into fourth position and that is up four places from where he started in that number 27 car Absolutely will and you know, I don't think I could even call who's going to be foot the one crossing the line in this one but the big thing I have to say is Sebastian Job is carrying more momentum through the corners than anybody else on track Anybody that passes him, he gains an amount of the corners. Slow corner, fast corner, he just seems to be able to carry more speed well. I don't know what it is, but that guy is finding that magic number. I don't think anyone can hold him off. And you can see Povey trying to go down deep on the inside of the carousel. He unwinds up Will Raceley, and that's actually going to put him on the outside line as they work themselves down that king down in towards the hairpin. Now, can Povey make it work on the outside line? We'll stay on board with Povey. Here you can see that Job actually easily gets it done. It's Povey almost making contact there with Ward. That could be the difference maker because you can see that gave a couple of car lengths advantage to Sebastian Job as they work themselves through the S's. And the last thing you want to do, Will, is give Sebastian Job an advantage because that guy will take it and run. He is a proverbial bank robber of racing. 
But as we see Simon Povey coming back around, having the sniff to his right hand side as he runs through the kink of turn 10. Will we see some more action running through turn 11? And here we come down into 11 they come and will Povey get the move done down the inside? Two laps to go this time by. Do you know how close Povey was to hitting those tyres? I think closer than he would have liked to have been Will. And then you're on the outside. Yeah, Sebastian Job, there you can see on the outside is Simon Povey in the 78 car. They are lining up, line is done. And here comes Ward. Is he going to try and make it free wide? Not quite, but Ward, I think, is looking to try and go around the outside of Povey. Wiggle. Almost make a contact. Big wiggle there from Ward. Great view from the rear of Sebastian Job. Ward is driving the wheels off this thing. And will he try to actually dive down to the inside into free? No. He'll do it one at a time. And that arguably is the safest way of doing that one, Rachel. Right now, I think safe is a word that most of them have forgotten as we see Simon Povey doing a bit of off-roading as they go too wide with Job and, oh, Ward wiggling it again, really pushing the wheels off that car. I think he only, could only go faster if he stuck his feet out of the bottom wheel. Yeah, and there you can see this is going to allow Povey to have a look back down to the inside as we're looking from the rear of Sebastian Job. A lap and a half to go as um, Job just pushes out wide. That's going to allow Ward the opportunity to make that run as they come down into Ward. Turn number six, they are side by side coming down into the corner. Now, will Povey just sit in line? Because Povey's under attack now from Lambert as well as they come down too wide, too deep, through the hairpin, coming out the hairpin. It will just about be Sebastian Job with the advantage. We ride along board with Tom Ward. We've got one and a quarter laps of this motor race to go. They'll work themselves through the S's. They will see the white flag this time by Tom Ward. This is his chance. This is a setup chance, Rachel. Doesn't matter if he loses the lead down into turn and one. He needs to figure out where to get the move done and what a move there for Tom Ward. Absolutely. As we go three wide running out of turn 10, Will. This is incredible. Three wide by two behind them running into turn 11 this is just madness tom ward oh no simon Povey on the inside of job can he hold it through there tom ward behind him almost bump drafting him as they make that long drag strip run down. oh we've got oh, a blow up we've got a blow up that is tom ward as you can see him blowing his engine there in the 09 car he is out up in smoke white flag is out one more lap to go but tom ward is not gonna make it he will be out of this motorways down in towards turn number one it's now between job in first Povey in second and George Lambert made himself up into the third position he's trying to make the move on the outside so come down in towards 3A Rachel Lambert could be the one to upset the party and you can see back in the sunset you still got um, Ward still trying to hang on there despite that blown engine absolutely incredible driving there from Ward I just don't think he wants to give up uh, missed shift coming out of 11 trying to get that fastest speed it's just cost him what he knows and I think he's going to be hitting himself but of course look at number 5 Clive Armstrong up in 5th place of course uh, let's not forget he qualified back in 12th Will yeah it's riding along board there with Armstrong in the number 37 car half a lap of this race to go as they come down into the hairpin once again it does look as though that job finally has got on all he needs to do because Povey and Lambert were battling so close together what did I say to you Rachel if two people start battling for P2 it will allow Job out front to work himself into the race lead and that is what he's done that it will as we see Paul Grillo behind them move past George Lambert for that important fifth spot so this could be interesting uh, as you can see, still battles going on ahead. And some of these guys will come down into the final corner. You've got Sebastian Job coming down into that final corner for the final time. There he is, down into the final corner of the final lap, taking a lot of that inside curve. But Sebastian Job is able to hold on to take victory here at Sonoma Raceway. It will be Simon Povey who comes home in second place. Paul Grillo will come home in third. Actually, no, Lambert. I think might just have got out of the line with nope. confirmation. It Paul was Grillo, Grillo, third place. Grillo, third. Lambert, fourth. Armstrong rounds out your top five. Rachel, arguably, this has been one of the best races we have seen in the history of the club UK and I skip barber championship. You know what, Will? I don't care who won that race. I don't care who came first. I don't care who came last. That was one of the best races I've had the pleasure of watching and commentating in a very long time. The guys were so respectful. They had they gave each other room they were careful yet they were side by side they were two wide three wide going through corners multiple lines these guys are some of the cream of the crop in terms of open wheel racing in the club uk and i and this was a spectacular display of driving talent will what a motor race we have just had 
Um, I'm, I'm actually moderately speechless right now. We will, however, run through your final race result in just one moment's time. But before we do that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to get myself a quick sip of water. We'll be back in 45 seconds time. Stick with us. So then, ladies and gentlemen, to run through your final race results here from the Club UK and Ireland Skip Barber Racing School Championship on Racebot TV, powered by And One Design. There is your top 10. Sebastian Job from Simon Povey, from Paul Grillo, Clive Armstrong, Simon Holbert, Dominic Brennan, Bill Fraser, uh, Brendan O'Brien and Graham Carroll. They are your top 10. As we then have a look just a little bit further back, Tim Adcock 11th, Mark O'Connell 12th, Rich Jones 13th, Tom Ward, blown engine for him 14th, Robert Plumney 15th, Mark Mercer in 16th, Bobby West 17th, Murray A. Coote 18th, Alan Patterson 19th, and Stuart Adcock rounds out your top 20. Then we've got ourselves one DNS um, with Clark Williams and one DNS with Richard Avery in P number 22. Rachel calm down yeah i don't think i have will that's <laughs> i'm still coming to grips with what an awesome race we just got to see that was insane I, I would ask you for a driver of the race but i think this is one of those times where we don't need to give a driver of the race i think we just need to give the field driver of the race i think we do because uh, there was close racing obviously we focused a lot on the lead because this was one of those races where it was absolutely open you know we didn't know who was going to win until the last lap and we were just it was so much up for grabs it was so clean it was so exciting but i want to just reassure the viewers there was amazing fighting throughout that field cars were two and three wide everywhere and it yeah we have a field of the day <laughs> i like the idea will we have a field of the day well I, I have to say despite the fact that the stats show sebastian job leading a total of 10 laps here today Simon povey only leading two laps I think you could at least go into 20, maybe 25 different lead changes over the course of today's event. And that's one of those things. It's not often we get to talk about a race with 25 lead changes plus. You were right when you said a little bit earlier on that this race had an oval feel to it. It absolutely did. You know, you don't see this amount of lead changing and passing unless you're on an oval. I mean, let's remember, folks, this is a road course. This is Sonoma Raceway. It turns right and left. Yet yeah, these guys were they were all over each other. There was so much speed and talent in this field, and that goes for the entire grid. Because let's not forget, you know, not a single person got lapped in this race, Will, apart from people who didn't finish. It was just incredible. You're completely right. And at one point you had nine cars separated by about one point two seconds on the racetrack. You want to know what that is? That is basically a bit like Chicago Land Speedway in the IndyCar IRL 05 days. That is how close that was. And for any of these drivers, one mistake would have been the difference maker. As we're just having a look at a replay there of Tom Ward trying to see where he had his engine blow up. I think actually he might have just grazed the wall just before he actually made that mischief. But of course, Tom Ward, disappointing for him because I think actually he was the one driver with that deep braking who would have had the chance to make that pass over Sebastian Job on that last lap. Absolutely, Will, and I think he was the driver that was keeping Sebastian Job honest. He was one of the few drivers there that was really keeping him close because he was fighting with the leader. As soon as he was gone, all credit to Simon Povey, he was really quick today. He just didn't quite have that edge that Tom Ward had, and that edge just allowed him to keep him under control. As soon as he was gone, Job trotted off into the sunset thing, saying, thank you very much, I'll see you later. 
Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that is all we have time for here today from the 11th round of this championship. Rachel, we've got one more race to go. That will be in one week's time here on Race Spot TV. Who knows? It could be as exciting as what we've had today. You know what, Will? I absolutely hope it is. So, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you same time, same place in exactly one week's time for what will be the 12th and final round of this season's championship that will be here of course on race spot tv don't forget race spot tv is your home for gt racing all for long we've got the stc black cup that is every thursday night here on race spot tv as well as being the official home of the 2014 neo endurance series coverage of that will kick off in november but before that we have ourselves the race spot tv 24 hours as far set your clock for the first big endurance race on iRacing november 1st and 2nd exclusively live here on race spot tv for more information and to register your team head over to racebot.tv forward slash 24h this has been a race spot tv presentation then of the club uk and skip barber racing school championship for myself will vincent and rachel whiteford Thank you very much for being a part of what I can honestly say has been one of the craziest motor races I have ever called. And we will talk to you all next time. Bye-bye.